This is from a book called The Red Wolf. It takes place on the Arctic Circle in northern Sweden, where I was raised. Usually my books take place in Stockholm, but this one is from my hometown, and people up there hated it. <laughs> they said, why have you written that it's so cold and dark up here? <laughs> There's no tourists coming. When you're writing that it's cold and dark, they said, well, it's in the middle of winter on the Arctic Circle, what do you expect? <laughs> he had never been able to stand the sight of blood. There was something about the consistency, thick and pulsating. He knew it was irrational, especially for someone like him. Recently, this revol revulsion had crept, in, crept into his dreams, taking expression in ways he couldn't control. Hey, we're here! The voice seeped through the thin membranes of sleep, making the blood suddenly vanish. The intense feeling of nausea remained, the sharp cold rushing in through the door of the bus. The driver hunched his shoulders in a vain attempt to escape it. Unless you want to come down to the garage. All the other passengers had gotten off the airport bus. He stood up with an effort, bent over with pain. He picked up his duffel bag from the seat, muttering, merci beaucoup. The jolt as his feet hit the ground made him groan. He leaned against the frosted side paneling of the bus for a moment, rubbing his forehead. A woman in a big hat on her way to the local bus stop a bit further on stopped next to his duffel bag. There was genuine concern in her eyes, her back bowed as she leaned toward him. Are you all right? Do you need help? He reacted strongly and immediately, waving his hand in her face. Listen, what? He said, far too loudly, panting from the effort. The woman didn't move, just blinked a few times with her mouth open. It's a massage, they said, listen, what? Her expression crumbled in the face of obvious aggression, and she backed away with an offended look in her eyes. He watched her go, heavy and thick set plodding toward the number three bus with her bulky carrier bags. I wonder if that's how I sound, he thought, when I speak Swedish. <laughs> Realized that his thoughts were actually formulating themselves in his mother tongue. Independence, he thought, forcing his brain back into French. Je suis mon propre maître. The woman glared at him before getting on the bus. He stood there in the diesel fumes as the bus slid away and the street emptied of people, listening to the silence of the cold, absorbing the shadowless light. Nowhere on earth was outer space as close as it was at the polar circle. When it was growing up, he took the isolation for granted, not realizing the significance of living on the roof of the world. <clears throat> but he could see them now as clearly as if they were engraved on the streets, the buildings, the frozen concrete. Isolation and exposure, endless distance, so familiar and yet so alien. This is a harsh place, he thought, in Swedish once more. A town that's frozen solid and only exists on state subsidies and steel. Then, just like me.